الحمد لله نحمده ونستعين به ونسترشده ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا وسيئات أعمالنا من يهدي الله فهو المهتدي ومن يضلل فلن تجد له وليا مرشدا أوصيكم عباد الله وإياي بتقوى الله وأحضكم على طاعته وأنهاكم عن مخالفته وأستفتح بالذي هو خير وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وأن محمدًا عبده ورسوله أما بعد dear brothers and sisters Today I would like to share with you some reflections on مغفرة on attaining the forgiveness of Allah سبحانه وتعالى something that is essential in the life of every human being something that we should always seek as believers in Allah سبحانه وتعالى and strive to attain on a daily basis in every aspect of our action and our deeds. First of all, we must realize that as a human being, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created us with the will to make mistakes, with the ability to commit sins. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made us imperfect in one sense. So we all commit mistakes. We all need to seek the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala of these mistakes. It's very similar to driving your car. The best with the best intentions, still people make mistakes and have accidents and create problems for each other. And the same apply to our own lives. We make mistakes and commit sins, whether in our relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or in relationship to those around us, when we are talking to other people, when we are dealing with other people, when we are neglecting our duties toward Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if we reflect upon our daily life, we will see that we commit sins, major and minor, and we should always seek forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from these sins. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us, all the children of Adam commit mistakes and made mistakes. And the best among them are those who seek to repair these mistakes. So we should not look at this as something that will happen to other people but will not happen to us. We are all committing these mistakes. Some of us may commit minor ones, some of us may commit major ones, but we all are sinners. We all are making these mistakes. No one is better than the other. And if you look at the Sahaba of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, definitely the people who supported the Prophet of Allah, whether it is our Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam or other Prophets are the best of their generations and of other generations also. And when we look at the Sahaba of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, we see that they were as near to, com to being perfect as a human being would be, but they still committed mistakes and committed sins. Seeking forgiveness from Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala is something that Allah mentioned in the Quran many times. He mentioned to us to seek forgiveness, whether it was at the call of Nuh alayhi salam to his people. فَقُلْتُ اسْتَغْفِرُوا رَبَّكُمْ إِنَّهُ كَانَ غَفَّارًا And this is a very subtle and nice reminder. When Nuh alayhi salam, who lived for many years with his people, call upon them to repent and seek forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he mentioned to them something else. He said to them, إِنَّهُ كَانَ غَفَّارًا And this is a name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Al-Ghaffar, Al-Ghafoor, the one who forgives not on a one-by-one -one basis, but on a continuous basis. He continuously forgive his people what they have done. So Nuh alayhi salam, when he called upon his people, he said to them, Staghfiru rabbakum innahu kana ghaffara. He will forgive one sin after another. And we see this in the life of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. One of the Sahaba was continuously making sins. 
and seek the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So he felt doomed that he is continuously making these mistakes. And then he goes and asks Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness. And he came to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and told him, this is how I feel. I feel very miserable because I make a sin. Then I ask Allah for forgiveness. Then I make this sin again. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to him, Allah forgives your sin. And he said to him, but then I make it again. I go again and make the same sin. And the Prophet said to him, Allah will forgive your sin. And then he said to him, and I continue to do this. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to him, Allah will not give up unless you give up. As long as you ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness, he is ready to forgive you. He is willing to forgive you. His door is open always for you. And this is what we should keep in mind. Some of us start drifting away from the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And they do not resort to ask Allah for forgiveness because they think as long as I am straying away from the path of Allah, I should not ask for his forgiveness. But the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam taught the Sahabi and taught every one of us that continuously you should ask Allah for forgiveness. And who knows that one day the, see, the words that you are saying with your tongue will touch your heart, will make your feeling tender, and you will indeed seek the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but for the last time. And you will drift into the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not away from it. You will quit the sins, not that you have done that willingly, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bring you to the end of all the misery that you have in your life when you are drifting away from the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So seeking forgiveness is something that as Muslims we should do and we do. But we should do this in ways that would bring it truly into our hearts. Sometimes we say astaghfirullah al azim but had we reflected upon what we are saying, did we know whom we are talking to? Did we bring in our hearts the might, the generosity, and the goodness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? We say this usually, habitually, with our lips, but we need to do it with our hearts and to reflect that we are petitioning Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness. And Allah, the mighty, who has given us all the bounties that we have, we are asking him for additional bounty to forgive us, to forgive our sins. And he is able and he is forgiving as we are told in the Quran. So saying this with our tongues is one way. Another one, another way to attain the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is to be forgiving in nature. If you look at the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his nature, was very forgiving. Many people attacked him when he was weak. Many people denied him as a prophet and called him many names, but he forgave them. And if you look at the story of Yusuf alayhi salam, which we covered in a previous khutbah, let's reflect upon Yusuf alayhi salam and all the trouble that he went through because his brothers plotted against him and wanted to see him disappear from the face of the earth when he brought his brothers and his parents into him. I'm not going to go back and hold you accountable. I have forgiven you and I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive you. Not only that, he asked Allah to forgive him himself. May Allah give me forgiveness, forgiveness for myself and for you. And this is in the Quran. If you forgive others, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will reciprocate by forgiving you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Quran, Fa'afu wasfahu, forgive. And do not hold grudge against people. Ala tuhibbuna an lakum. 
Don't you like that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive you? If you want him to forgive you, then be forgiving. Do not always have a long account of the mistakes of the others, of the problems of the others, because then you will live indeed a very miserable life. If you look at the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and how forgiving he was, even to the people who killed his uncle, for example, the man who ambushed his uncle and he became a believer in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when he came to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he forgave him many instances people think or thought that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is not going to let things go he will not be forgiving but he would surprise his enemies more than his friends by his nature that he was always willing to forgive for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Not only that, when he felt that he did something wrong to a human being, he would ask that human being to forgive him. In the battle of Badr, when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was positioning his army, he was lining the army at the front line and he wanted them to be in a straight line. And with a small stick in his hand, he pushed it in the belly of one of his companions to make him straight. And then man said to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam as if he felt pain and the Prophet felt that he has done something wrong to this man. The leader of the army was basically positioning his, his troops and he felt that he did something wrong to one of his troops. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam showed him his stomach and said to him, push me as I did. And that man went and kissed the belly of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. This is how the Prophet was seeking the forgiveness of those around him. And he told his companions always to be forgiving. And he was following the example set by Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala in the Quran. If you want the forgiveness of Allah, then forgive others around you. And this will result not only in the forgiveness of Allah, but it will result in people loving you, in people admiring you, and in people saying how high you are in your esteem to yourself that you do not care about the harm and the damage because you seek the re repentance, you seek the recompensation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not from the servants of Allah. And Allah will give you much more than you can expect from any other people, any people that can give you around you. Another way to seek the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is by doing good deeds. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us in the Quran that you can cover a bad deed with a good deed. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us that if you have been clouded, if your vision has been clouded by the shaitan, then you should seek forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the cloud will go away, the vision will come back to you. And always doing a good deed will result in the maghfirah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this dunya and in the hereafter. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us that if you give for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, for example, whether you give your time or your wealth, what would be the results? The results will be that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give you back what you have given. So forgiveness could be sought by asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness, by saying astaghfirullah al azim as much as we can. And when we say astaghfirullah al azim as much as we can, let's reflect upon the following. We, in our daily life, how many times we wish to use soap, to wash our hands, to wash our faces, and to look clean. We need to say astaghfirullah, to get clean in our soul from the sins that we have committed. The more that you wash your hand, the more that you go and wash your hand and clean your, with soap, the more you look nice and 
bright in the eyes of people around you. And the more you cleanse yourself, not physically, but morally by saying Astaghfirullah al azim seeking the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the more your soul will be bright and the more you will be elated and the more you will be near to the forgiveness and to the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Saying it in every aspect, in every turn of our life is something that will reinforce our Iman in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And however feeble our feeling about it, it will grow strong by the day. If it becomes a habit, but a habit, we say it not only by our tongues, but we reflect upon what we are saying. Can you stay a day without having a shower? Can you stay a day without washing your hands with soaps and getting all the dirt away? You cannot. And people around you will start looking at you and closing their noses. And the same applies to istighfar. If you make it a continuous habit, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make your face bright and will make you likable to those around you because you have asked for his forgiveness and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us his forgiveness is limitless. It will not affect anything of that he has. In the Hadith Qudsi, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ayabna Adam, O son of Adam, O the child of Adam, if you come to me with the whole earth as sins, I will come to you with forgiveness. So why not to draw from the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And it all, it all cost us to ask Allah for forgiveness and we will be granted it by the grace of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if you give if you do something good, whether giving your time, giving an advice, giving your wealth in the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then Allah will give you a lot of forgiveness as he promised in the Quran. And if you feel sincere about the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you will seek it and you will seek it knowing that you will be granted it. As the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam we have said in the hadith that this man felt so desperate that Allah will not forgive him. He felt that he has drawn enough from the forgiveness of Allah. But the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told him, Allah will give up only when you give up. But as long as you have trust in the forgiveness of Allah and you turn your face to him seeking his forgiveness, it will be given to you. And we need this more than any these days. These days are very tough days. Everywhere you go, you are looking at something that is considered a sin. If you go look at the TV, you cannot help but see something that is haram. If you go into the, on the net, you will see something that is haram. If you walk in the street, you will see people cursing and using very bad language that is haram. If you look at dealing with each other, you will see that many of us are committing sins that required constant forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we should, besides staying away from these bad habits, always seek the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as the Prophet and his companions did. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum. الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين There are an element or a principle in psychology that if you repeat a sentence many times then this sentence will transform your behavior You see people when psychologists for example when you are complaining to them about feeling low they will try to inspire you by steering you away from saying I am a loser to say I am a winner. And before we know about psychology, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam guided us to seek forgiveness of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. And if you 
continuously say it with your lips, it will reflect in your on your behavior. It will reflect on dealing with others. And the concept of forgiveness does not only extend to Muslims, it extends to all people. Forgiveness is a trait of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he endowed us with as a human being. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives all sins as he told us in the Quran. Inna Allah yaghfiru dhunuba jami'a. So all sins are forgiven if you turn your face to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and ask him for forgiveness. He is ready to give you a chance, another chance, and one more chance, more than you can expect and more than you have hoped for. So this is concept of forgiveness. We have seen it in the life of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Not only within the Muslim community, but was extended beyond the Muslim community. And many times people came to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam asking him for a favor and he would double it for them out of his nature because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told him that one way to persuade people to tilt their mind towards you and to let them know that you are truly not someone who is keen on controlling them but who is keen on guiding them is to be forgiving and to show them the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reflected on, in your behavior. And this is something that we need to propagate among the Muslim community and beyond the Muslim community in this society. If we do this, then we will lead a relaxed life because if you have grudges, if you have a long list of problems with people, then your life will be very miserable and it will never end having, you will never end having problems with people as long as you are walking on this earth. But if you forgive, and if you are willing to make the list shorter and shorter, your life will be more enjoyable. <coughs> and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will reciprocate by forgiving you for what you have done. And as such, you will lead a happy life on this earth and in the hereafter. I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive our sins اللهم اجمعنا على ما يرضيك وحل بيننا وبين معاصيك واجعلنا من المتحابين فيك اللهم لا تدع لنا ذنبا إلا غفرته ولا هما إلا فرجته ولا عيبا إلا سترته ولا دينا إلا قضيته ولا غائبا إلا رددته ولا مريضا إلا شفيته ولا ميتا إلا رحمته اللهم اشف مرضانا اللهم عاف مبتلانا اللهم ارحم موتانا اللهم اجعل الجنة مثواهم ومثوانا يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم أغننا بحلالك عن حرامك وبطاعتك عن معصيتك وبك عمن سواك اللهم إنا نعوذ بك من الفتن ما ظهر منها وما بطن ونعوذ بك من فتنة المال ومن فتنة المحيا والممات ومن فتنة المسيح الدجال اللهم وإذا أردت فتنة في قوم فتوفنا غير مفتونين اللهم إنا نعوذ بك من أن نزل أو نزل أو نضل أو نضل أو نظلم أو نظلم أو نجهل أو يجهل علينا عباد الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربة وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعظكم لعلكم تذكرون وأقم الصلاة